Uh, good to have you here. All right. You're welcome to Archicad lecture. And in this lecture, I want to take you quickly through the steps that you can use to model using Archicad. The version that we are using here is Archicad 19. Hold on. So here in Archicad 19, I've already opened the uh, startup menu where you have uh, starts Archicad 19. And you have here, what do you do? What you do is either you create a new project or you open a project. But because we are just starting now, we are going to create a new project. You can do well to look at my mouse throughout this video because I will be directing you to where my cursor is going to. So where you take your cursor to, if you are with your Archicad, if you have not opened your Archicad, I think you can go ahead and try this. While you're watching this video, I'll take it a bit slow so that you can follow it and be doing it. You can pause the video at any time and practice what I'm going to show you. So if you have not launched Archicad in your system, I think you should go ahead and launch Archicad 19 because that's what I'm going to use to teach you. If you have not installed, then you, I think it's right. You pause the video and get that installed. Okay, now, fine. Assuming that you have got Archicad 19 in your system, you have here, the dialogue is asking you, what would you like to do? And I'm telling you that what you should do at this point is to create a new project. Create a new project. Again, I say, create a new project. Great. So you click on that. What you find here, you will see, use a template. And uh, I would just say you go with the default templates. Then it says use latest settings. You can just leave everything there as you see it. And let's just start. Once again, my name is architect Utibe Aka, and I'm here to take you through how to use Archicad 19 to model. So you can click new now that you've created a new project. And when you click new in your dialogue, it will open. Don't click quit, click new. And that takes you into the project proper. All right, for my system, it's booting. It's trying to open up Archicad 19. Yours might take longer. Might be also, it might also be faster or whichever. Here we are. What you are seeing now, up here is called uh, it's called the model space. Uh, let me take this out of here so that we can see. So yeah, I hope you can see. All right. What you are seeing here, the entire screen you're viewing now is the model space. And uh, in the Archicad uh, interface, you have what is called the menu and the tools. Now, the horizontal bar at the top of your screen, the horizontal bar at the top of your screen is what you call the menu. So we have the file menu, the edit, the view, the design, the documents, options, teamwork, window, help, and so on. And we ha also have the two, two uh, I said we have the menu and the toolbox. And we also have the toolbox as the vertical bar by your left-hand side. So look at that, in the toolbar, we have the select tool, we have the marquee, we have design, document, dimension, level, 
text and all whatnot. But take note that you can collapse this and to get it clear, under design, you have wall. It means that you can actually model your wall. Archicad is a parametric software that allows you to build a parametric model that has all its, a digital model that has its features interrelated and connected parametrically so that any change you make at one point, you can change it at the other side. It can be reflected at the other view. For instance, what you draw on your plan will be reflected in your elevations and uh, sections. So it has been built up in that way to enable you do such. Here we also have uh, on that design menu, we have the wall, the door, the window, column, beam, slab, stair, roof, shell, skylight, cotton wall, morph, object, zone, and all others that you can see here. These will help you to model. As we all know, when you are drawing in architecture, you have these elements. And it is worthy for you to note that wall is primary, what you will need to start with before you start putting every other thing. But for you to get started here, I would advise that you set your levels. Level is relative to vertical height meaning you have your assumed grade, which is the floor outside. You have your floor level. That is the ground floor level. You have the first floor level. You have subsequent floors, as you may know. So now, where do you find that? Look at your cursor here again. Look at the highlighted ground floor here by your right side. And at the right side, you find what it's called a navigator project map. The navigator project map, at the first one you find on title story, you find on title story, once you save this project, it will no longer be untitled. It will carry bear the name of the project. So I could advise you at this moment, let us save this file so that we can name it. So you can say file, save us or even save whichever I would go, save us. And it's asking you where do you want to save it. So I, I always advise that you create a name of the folder that you want to save files so that you know what the name is. And uh, in this case, I'm going to put it in my documents. And I create a folder in my documents called Archicad. Archicad. So we call the folder Archicad lesson. And here we have the folder. And uh, we call this, I think it's ideal, we call it a name that will be relevant for what we are going to do. In this, in the course of this, we are going to model a bungalow, maybe a two-bedroom bungalow. So we call it two bed room bungalow. Here, get that, and we save. You see, that untitled has changed to two bedroom bungalow. Now, you look at the stories, we have different levels. We have zero, which is ground floor, one, which is story one, two, which is story two. But you are going to change this for zero to be assumed grade level. So you right click on zero. What do you have? You have this menu open so you can say uh, story settings. That means you go to the le lowest level and change it to story setting. I take that again. Right click on ground floor, which is zero and go down to story settings. Then you name it assume grade level. So to name it, all you need to do is select the point you want to change and let it be highlighted. 
can click and remove ground floor and uh, caps lock and type in capital letters assumed grade level. That's it. And that's level zero. What's the height from that to the next level? I, I take it to be 600. 600 from grade to your DPC, as you may call it, or your ground floor. So automatically, the next floor, which is one, is now ground floor. But you need to write it by yourself. Ground floor level. Always introduce that level. If you put plan, if you put plan, uh, that might be giving you some conflicts when you'll be cutting your sections because these stories will appear in your section. And if you call it plan, you'll be seeing assume grade plan, uh, ground floor plan in your section. And it is not supposed to be so. In your section, you see it as levels. So you call your floor levels levels. So that is uh, 600 to, what's the height to next? Uh, the headroom of that point uh, room is three meters. But if you are going to the next level, assuming that you have a slab, so we call it 3150, 3150. That's it. So being a bungalow that we want to do, the second level should be a ceiling level. Ceiling level and the ceiling level starts from 3750 to you know I, I'm not gonna tell know this until we get to the section, then we'll come back and edit it. So you can say okay and we start, but observe what happens here. The naming has changed. We now have zero to be assumed great one to be ground floor and uh, two to be uh, ceiling level. So what next do we have to do is to start drawing. But remember before you start drawing, you must have had your, your sketch. So uh, in this case, uh, should we look for a sketch here to use and do this? Let's see if we have one. If we do not, I would say that we can also create, but it's always, when you come to the computer, you should have had your sketch. Okay, we're working with a sketch now, and the sketch is a two bedroom bungalow. I have it in my mind, and you might also have your own sketch, but the first thing to do is to get to the wall and click on the default setting. Look at it here. You see default setting, or you double click on the wall tool. It will bring out the default setting. What do you do? you set the type of wall that you want. So you go to geometry. In geometry, we want it to be a structure, basic wall. The second one is composite. So we, we choose the basic. And how do we want it to relate? We don't want it to link with any floor. So it's not linked. And uh, the characteristics of that wall, or rather the representation of that wall, we can leave it at default at this point. The thickness of that wall, being a bungalow, we use 150 thickness of wall, and uh, that is it. So where do we start to draw that? We're starting on the ground floor. So we come down to ground floor and click on ground floor where we have our navigator project map. Look at it here, you click on ground floor. If you leave it at assume grade, you will be having something else. So here we are. Now you've got your wall selected and you remember your wall had height. Look at it here again, your, the height of your wall. You, you have it here as 3,100, which is 3.1 meters. So let's make it three meters. That's it. Our wall is three meters. The, the unit of measurement in this software is by default in millimeters, and that's a metric scale. So you can always adjust it to set it the way you want it, but this is the default. So we work with this at the moment. 
until we get to the advanced stage. All right, are we together? So if we are, just give a thumbs up to this video. You can drop a comment if you need me to clarify some things for you. But at the moment, let's continue. So we are drawing a two bedroom bungalow. Okay. Now, I, the first thing for me to do here now is to draw a wall. And uh, my wall setting should be single wall, not rectangular. So I come up here. I'm going to change it to the center setting. Look at where I'm clicking. Face, I change it to the center. Center. And uh, that's it. All right. So I draw it, click and hold. Now, because this wall has its reference point at the center, look at it here. You see, this is center. You can change it. I've selected the wall. If, I, if you want to select, note, if you want to select, you hold your shift down. If you want to select, you hold your shift down and click on the object you want to select. And it will be selected automatically. All right? Hold your shift down. Click on the object and it's selected. You see, if you want to remove that selection, you press your escape key in your key on your keyboard and it goes. So now we've got this wall and I want to select it because I want to work with it. So I hold my shift down, I click on that wall. That's it. I want to offset this wall for my room to have a three meter or rather a 3.6 meter in to in. But you know, for you to have a 3.3 meter into in wall, you need to add the thickness of the wall, which means 3.6 plus 150, which is 3750. So we click here. Con for me to duplicate this wall is Control D Control. That's a shortcut. So I'm going to teach you with the shortcut. Control D Control. That's it. You see the plus sign. Once you see the plus sign, you're good. You click on it. Control D, Control. Hold your shift. Click. Hold shift down. The reason for holding the shift down is to have your line straight. So shift R. What does the R do? It allow it enables me to add the distance that I want to offset. So remember, I said three seven fifty. So three seven fifty. Yes. Somebody has a question. I know that question is, what is the 3,754? Remember, we are going to offset to have a, a wall space of 3.6 meters, which is 3,600. But I said, because we are offsetting from center to center, you need to add the thickness of the wall, which is half from this end and half from the other end, which is 150, and you have it 3,750. Do you understand that? All right, great. Let's continue. So I press my enter and that's 3750. If you want to measure it, we'll measure and you confirm and that's gonna be what it is. Okay, so this is one room. I'm gonna have the battery of my rooms here. I remember that a two bedroom bungalow, we have a living room. So living room space, my living room space is uh, uh, 5.1 meters by width. So I select, I hold my shift and select Control D, Control. Then I click on it and move and hold my shift. R. 51 plus 150 is 5250. Enter. And that is it. I've gotten that. So, what's the next thing for us to do? The next thing for us to do is to escape and uh, we draw the horizontal wall. We are done with the vertical wall at the moment. So we click on this, hold our shift down. That's it. We've got this one. So an offset. Control. Hold shift. Click on the wall. Control D, Control. Click offset, shift R. And uh, our, 
our room this time around is also 3750. Offset 3750. Enter. That's it. And uh, assuming that this space is going to have a toilet. So we offset for the convenience. Control D, Control. Shift. R, one, nine, fifty. Why are we using one, nine, fifty? My toilet is one, eight, so we offset one, nine, fifty. And that's it. Then the next one again is control, D, control is still on selection, so we can continue. Shift R, three, seven, fifty. I'm sure we got what we are talking about here. So with this, we have established two rooms and I want to offset for your entrance to the rooms, control, D, control, shift R, one, six, 50. That's a one, five space. And uh, another one is our kitchen, right? So we have our kitchen and our dining. Control, D, control. Let's move to the kitchen. Shift R, offset our kitchen to be three meters, so it's gonna be 3150. Enter, uh, that's too much. We use it from the other end. Let's offset for the dining first, three meters. Control, D control, shift R, and you have 3150, enter. That's it, the remaining space goes for our Kitchen. So the same thing here to create our veranda. Shift R. One eight. We take one or one one five. We take one five. With this. Is it okay? Okay. Let's go with one eight. One eight. That's one nine fifty. One nine five zero. Enter. That's too much. So if we take 600 plus 900 is what? One five, okay. Control D, Control, Shift R. So one five is one six fifty. Enter. Mm. That's still too much. Okay, leave it there. That's what we have from our sketch. Okay, so we cut off what we don't want. To cut, what do you do? You hold control and click on the edges that you want to cut off. Look at that. And when you hold the control to cut, you'll find out that, when you hold control to cut, you find that the scissor turns black. And at that point, you are free to cut. That's where we are. That's what we are doing here. So we are cutting and we are bringing out our plan gradually. How does it come up? Are you able to understand this? If you are having difficulty in understanding, kindly drop a message or rather the comments, and I will respond to you accordingly. So that's it for now. We, we have been able to establish the basics. So we are having an open plan living room 
open plan living room and uh, that's it so what's the next thing for us to do here is to put the door so i click on the door and the size of the door is 900 and the height is 2.1 so then it should start from zero that means you start from the floor not lifting it up away from the floor so we put zero here and we set the door so this is the door to the room here let's get the angle where we want to hinge it so you put a door in the first room put a door to the second room So we've got doors, doors, doors. Now the next thing we need here is the entrance door. So we click and offset. How do we do that? You hold shift and click. Control D, control offsets by one five or one, no, one five should be fine. Shift R, one five means one six fifty, enter. That's it. What next? We cut this off. Entrance. So we fix the entrance. Remember, this is purely for illustration. All right? The plan might appear functional, but this is not designed for use. It is to illustrate how you can use this to model a space. All right. Now, You cut off this so that you can have access to your rooms from the living room. And uh, you put a veranda in the space. OK, OK. So what else do we need here? You go to arches, arc, arc. you find arc indoors. So we've already selected door. So what else do we need to do? Empty door opening. The empty door opening, we take the rectangular and uh, we go to the opening settings. How do we want it to show? We want the openings to show on floor plan. All right, now for us to show the opening. So you click the opening, and uh, the height of the opening should be 2.4. And uh, the width, you can stretch it to any point you want it. So watch what I'm doing. Shift down, click on it. Stretch to the edge. What do we have here? 2.4. So 2.4, 2.4. That's okay for that. And uh, the same might will be taken to the other side. So we need to show this and the symbol. So you hold on and see how I'm going to edit this 
for you to see the symbol. Override object pens, override object attributes. So I do you want this to show symbolic symbolic symbol line pen. All right, follow up the screen, follow up what you see in the screen. Follow up what you see in the screen. Wall contours, that's what we're looking for. So we put it on both sides. You see, if you didn't find that, you would be struggling. That's it. So wall contours, that's what we enabled. Now we want to inject this and make it unique in its way. So you hold your Alt key, Hold your Alt key down and click on the arch. So you pick the attribute of it and you come to the front of this building and uh, drop it one. And if you need a second one, you get to the edge and place the second one. And that's it. So we have been able to position this. Okay, the next thing for us to, I want to show you here is how you insert your windows. One more door, I think the toilet door, then we move to windows. The door here, the height of the door, I think we do the same thing of picking the attributes, Alt and click, inject then, Size of the door should be 750. So we change the size, the height remains, and uh, the door should be right at the center of the space, if you like it, and opens inward. That's it. That's it. So we're moving to Windows now. So I've clicked on Windows. And what kind of windows do we need? I need a sliding window double sash. So we take this option, double sash sliding window. What height do you want it? What width do you want it? So you can go to preview positioning. You see that we have the width of 1.5 and the height of 1.5. And note, if you have a height of 1.5, because of the level of your lintel, being 2.1, you will need to have a seal less than 900. So I don't want to have a seal less than 900. I want to have a height of the window 1.2 and uh, and the seal to be 900. So 1.2 plus 900 is what? 2.1, which is the surface of your lintel. So we continue. Okay. And uh, I'm position. I'm going to position my windows for us to benefit uh, optimal cross ventilation. So I've just done that in the first room. So remind you, none of these rooms are master. We just have bedroom one and bedroom two because there's none that is in suite, and both of them have this, are the same sizes, three point six by three point six. So take notes. Very soon, I'm going to show you how you can calculate the area of this space. And you can use that area to, you can use that area to create or rather 
solve for the number of tiles that you will need for this facility. It's very important that you pay attention to that because this is another aspect that a lot of people uh, don't know how to do. So I'm going to take time in the next video to show you how to do that with this particular drawing. But I, I believe that with this now, we are using one type of window and we're going to put that one type of window and all the spaces except for toilet and kitchen, which we will have to make a few adjustments. So for the living room and the dining, I uh, have gone ahead to put this window for you here and uh, here. So we have two windows in the living room and uh, two in the, what's it called? One in the dining. I'm deliberately not touching the side wall with, to, put it, to put any window because you may decide that the building will be a semi-detached. So we could continue. So we're gonna change this window to one 900 for one, and the other one will be 1.5. That's it, that's it, that's it. So here is it. That's how it looks. So one other window for kitchen, and we are almost done with this video. I hope you are getting to understand how to draw with this. So we have reduced this to uh, 1.2 window, and we are gonna make the surface 900 and the height of it is going to be 1.2 so that our kitchen slab will not touch the window. I hope you're understanding. If you don't understand, feel free to drop comments ask for clarification, and I will tell you what to do, all right? Or you can also schedule for me to give you a private lesson on this. Great. All right, so that's it. We got to put the window for the toilet. So we are gonna change the seal from this one down to 1.5. The reason is, we don't want to be in the toilet and uh, while you're having your bath, someone is seeing you from there. And we change the height to 600. So 600 plus 1.5 is 2.1. Are you getting the message? I believe that's clear enough. So we change it, this to 900 and we continue. That's it, that's it, that's it. Okay, that is it for doors and windows. What else do you need in this building? You need a slab. You need a slab. But let me just show you one thing so that you can see all we have been modeling and whether we are making progress. If you press second function F3, that's it. Depending on the command in your laptop or you can just go to uh, view and 3D view option, and you click on 3D projection setting. You do your settings and you say, okay. Then you go back there, view, and you go element in 3D. All right, view option, yep. So let's look at what it looks like in 3D. Shift F3 is the shortcut. Shift F3. Shift F2, Shift F3. You have it. So when you click your shift, you hold it and press F3. So I click, if I click on this orbit, this is called orbit. You can rotate to see the building. So this is the building without the floor and without the roof. Okay, let's go ahead and put the floor so that we can end this class.
All right. So we are here. Quickly, we click on the slap tool. Slap tool. The same thing you do for every other tool, you go to it and set your reference points, which we did for the other one. And we are gonna check whether this is a composite or a single wall. We want it to be single slab, not uh, composite. So the top of this slab is the reference point that we have here. So we click on this edge. Let's get to the roots of it. What's the thickness of this slab? So we click on this. Thickness of the slab, we just assume 600 here. Okay, this is not assumption. We take three 150, that's the thickness of the floor slab. All right, that's it. Then what else? We cut off this one. Of this one. So we have cut off these two. So that's it. So shift F2. That's what we're talking about. So we remove. We step this down by 150. This will start by minus 150. Minus 150. And the thickness of it is 150. Okay. That's it. That's it. Of this. Okay, so we have been able to insert the slab. Something else that should be needs to be done here. Okay. So let's typically put our All right, I think at this point, we're gonna stop this uh, here. Thanks for watching. If you have questions again, I said, drop a comment so that I can treat them accordingly. If you are having difficulties, you can feel free to reach out at any time so I can guide you. Thank you.